And with the second moto starting right here with this college, 16 to 24, Jacob Williamson on the Kawasaki number 15 comes with the whole sh the Bell Helmets whole shot. Before our completion of the first lap, it looks like Austin Dodd might have passed Jacob Williamson in the back section to take the early lead and get the come across the finish line first. This track's a little bit different for these guys. You know, they were the first boat of the weekend yesterday, and uh, you know now they finally get to ride a rough track and see what it's like. You know, towards the end of the day for their third moto. One. Check, check. Well, not real sure what's going on there, uh, Sean, but I guess we had some uh, audio technical difficulties for just a moment, but we continue racing here as we pick up the action back in the 16 to 24 year old class. Wow. Everything's so exciting out there. It uh, kind of fried the uh, microphone system out, I guess, would be the case. Austin Dodd holding on to the lead after two in this one as we check in with Jacob Williamson back in the number two spot. About a second and a half separate the two. Kai Mackay, a 2.02 lap time, puts him 5.5 seconds back in the number three spot with the 61 of Justin Cooper under their two-minute mark at a 159. And here's the thing to look at. We've got three riders in the top five right now that are looking at under the two-minute mark. And they are Cooper in fourth. Dodd, your leader at a 158.866, which is so far the fastest lap of this moto. Uh, the number 15 of Jacob Williams at a 159.613. So it's Dodd, Williamson, Mackay at a 202.252. Justin Cooper, Samuel Redman rounding out the top five with a 202.017. Then Austin Oscott, or Toskop, the uh, 82 is sixth. Lane Shaw, the 86 and seventh. Colin Shiner is eighth. Brock Gorley, the 33 in ninth. And St. Merritt, the 29 rounding out the top 10. Up front, looks like already things starting to shape up as far as the battle for the lead as Dodd and Williamson seem to be trying to lock into a heated battle out there coming out of Storyland. Yes, and they need to pick it up because I believe the first moto winner was Justin Cooper. You know, he didn't get off to a great start this time, but and then also another notable rider out there we have is Stone Edler, the previous champion from last year. I'm not sure what kind of problems he had the first moto, but I believe he was a DNF. Wow. So uh, big changes there. Here's a, yeah, Edler back in 14th out here. Uh, the number five of Addison Emery is back in 11th. Those are two names that we expect to see up there battling in the top uh, five. Brock Gorley, who's back in ninth place, another rider I kind of expected to see rise to the occasion for a top five ride this week. 
and it looks like Jacob Williamson was able to get back into the lead, get around Austin Dodd. You know, we saw him come away with the bell shot. And, uh, you know, after they pass to the finish line this time, he does another 158.3, and, you know, that's to Austin Dodd's 202. I'm not sure if he had any problems back there, but it looks like Jacob Williamson is making it happen. So Williamson is making it happen now as he makes his way in front of the billboard now. And it looks like by himself at this point as Austin Dodd is trying to keep him in check nearly three seconds back. But here's another interesting point to ponder. Dodd, who turned a 158.866 on lap two, turned a 202.643 on lap three, and Jacob Williamson turned a 158.367. So now he's almost got a three-second lead after being able to make the moves that were necessary to get up front and start and to then, check out. And then Justin Cooper just gave us the fastest lap of the race with a 158.1. So. Obviously, he's in a move right now trying to get up into the top spot. No doubt. He's running a full four and a half seconds faster than Austin Dodd. So, in theory, that three-second gap should be closing up rather quickly in that battle for the number two spot while Williamson makes his way around Storyland. Now, there's the battle we're watching for. It's the battle for second place, and I think we may have just seen Cooper make the slice and dice on Dodd and make the pass and make it stick. There comes a battle for fourth and fifth. Kai Mackay and Samuel Redmond now have locked uh, together, it looks like, in that heated battle. Austin Toscob and Lane Shaw back in sixth and seventh. We saw going by there just a few moments ago as well. Yeah, it looked like Austin Dodd might actually push Justin Cooper a little bit wide to try to hold on that second spot. But as they come on around up to the Rocky Mountain right, we're going to check out and see what's going on. So and here they... And Justin Cooper was able to get around him going to the sweeper right now. So now his eyes are set on Jacob Williamson for the lead. So Williamson's got a big target on his back right now. One other thing that he has as well is a fast throttle hand. And he's got that baby twisted right now. Is it faster than Justin Cooper at this point who now sits 4.6 seconds behind? And Cooper, who had to get around Dodd, still turned to 158. Four, which was a full sec, 1.2 seconds faster than Williamson's 159.6. So Cooper turning the fastest lap and staying very consistent in that 158 range, even while trying to get around riders out there. That guy, that that tells me that, that guy's got some things dialed in as far as the conditions on this racetrack and and his bike. Everything is seems to be syncing up just perfectly today. Yes, and you know we're coming right after intermission, so. They made a few track changes, fixed the sweeper up a little bit, and uh, just means all the lines are coming together. You know, he's able to pass. Maybe he found some new lines outside, inside, and uh, maybe that'll be help, help him make up some time on Jacob Williamson to potentially get the pass. Well, Williamson enjoying the comfort zone whilst he can. Some four and a half seconds is what it was, but looking at this particular shot coming through Storyland right now, it looks to me like Justin Cooper may be just a hair closer than the 4.6 seconds we were looking at just a lap ago. When we get a little closer, these riders should be coming in and around the sweeper turn. And there go your leaders now. Heading up over the Rocky Mountain sweep, uh, Rocky Mountain itself, it looks like. And it looks like Jacob Williamson actually had a pretty good first moto. He came around third, so this is putting him in a good potential right now for the overall. So the start of moto number two here at the 34th annual Rocky Mountain ATVMC AMA Amateur National Motocross Championships presented by Amsoil. And here comes your leader, the 15 of Jacob Williamson. And there is Cooper, a 4.5 or make that 4.6 second gap last time around, 1.9 seconds now. A 2.02 lap time by Williamson, a 159 and a half lap time by Justin Cooper translates into that gap, closing up quite a bit. Now the question is, will we see Williamson start to pick things up as these riders make their way in and around the billboard through the forest now? You know, yeah, they're coming through the mechanics area right now. You know, a sign that Justin Cooper can say on his pit board is, is you have time, you're faster, you know, no, no need to rush this right now and try to get into the lead and make a mistake. No reason for Rodney Tomlin to rush anything. Shows up, stuff just works, bro. Yeah, it was just, Unbelievable. just as soon as he came in the building, everything's okay. Uh, yeah, your we're presence alone was all we needed. 
All right, nicely done, Rodney. Okay, so myself, Jason Wygant, and Sean Hackley back here in the tower. We will have Wes Kane at the podium as we watch this college uh, moto unfold. This is our first second moto of the week. So for the first time, the championship picture begins to get a little bit more in focus. Something's got to be. And uh, Cooper, who's in second, did win the first moto. So he's got himself in a pretty good position. Your first moto winner is second place rider Justin Cooper. Okay, you're saying he did win the first moto. He did, okay, yes. Okay, I thought you said he did. Yep. Williamson has a third from the first moto and winning it right now. So you're gonna be looking at a very close championship fight at least between those two if it ended like this. I know what you guys were saying, Cooper is definitely on a rail and trying to make a fight of it. Try to get up there and just go 1-1 one, one in these first two motos. So let's see if Williamson can hold him. Nope, Cooper's got it. Cooper goes by here and he is your leader. So Justin Cooper, as uh, Wes Kane will say many times throughout this week, if this guy can hold on to win these two motos, he'll be holding a pair of pocket aces going into the third set of motos. Yeah, you know, maybe Justin Cooper's pit board set, get him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, seriously. Words, so. I mean, he will not have to go out and even worry about winning the third moto if it ends this way, but that's a big if. It's been a pretty crazy year as far as riders seeming to have uh, things completely under control and then uh, losing at the last second. Previous moto, 250C. We saw Sam Franklin, your leader, crash all by himself on the last lap. He picked it up and still won the race, but it just gives you an idea of the type of things that can happen out here at the ranch. So Justin Cooper has overhauled uh, Jacob Williamson and Austin Dodd, still third. on that number 61 Yamaha yeah as he comes over the Rocky Mountain mountain right now he's uh, stretched up into a pretty good lead over Jacob Williams and everything uh, just coming through storyland wheelie man over the break of bumps he's uh, obviously been watching some previous races at a cold spring Harbor New York at water never gets warm cold spring yeah. Harbor it's upstate New York it's to be expected and uh, you folks at racertv.com can see him right now. You can see just how rutted this track is, as Sean was talking about. And he has another lap uh, complete. Heck of a comeback for him. And it's going to make life very easy. Looks like our leader coming into some lap traffic right now as he's leaving the Bell Forest. And uh, what is this section called? The short, long, long, the long short shoot. The long short, okay. The long short shoot. Handling the Ten Commandments with ease right there. Just taking, you know, the, the pro line. You know, obviously these guys are really good riders and everything. And that's probably his next step is the return next year in the A class. So we got these guys marked. Got, you got to know who's coming on strong. Uh, college, kind of a mix-up, though, with these ages. Kind of a hard class to figure out exactly where they fit into the mix, although that's the idea. So it gives different people a different opportunity. I think the name also changed, too, because at one point it was College Boy. Yeah. But, you know, some people might get offended. Like, I'm 24 years 24, old. I'm not a boy I'm not, anymore. I'm not, yeah, I'm a college man. But college then the 16-year-olds will be like, I'm not a man. Yeah, so it's just college, and uh, we're open for anybody. They, they call them the non-traditionals, the older college students, although they're usually about 40 <laughs> uh, on campus. <clears throat> Here is Cooper. 
and he's from upstate New York, but he is making this his own Cooperstown. Yes, Justin Cooper should be, uh, I think a two lap board could be coming out now. I'll go check it. It's a new little tabletop here proving tricky. Sean's gonna go check it out. Sean Hackley, two laps to go. Boy, you said he had time on his side to make that pass, and that's exactly how it worked. He had plenty of time to spare. Yes, you know, but obviously he's doing a really good laps right now. Now he's pretty consistent in the 158s. This last lap was a 203, but he has this lead, and it's no rush. Sam Redman still in third. Austin Dodd, no, Kai Mukai making passes again. Mukai's been going to be a pretty quick starter out here, but nice job by Kai Mukai getting around Dodd. Dodd was, I believe, third at one point, pushed back to fifth, second. Yeah, he was in second, I believe. And uh, yeah, now back 57, to fifth. Yep. He was in second, so looking at his lap time was a 218, he might have ran into some problems. Perhaps, yeah. That's, uh, about 11 seconds off of the riders around him. Or he just decided, like, just take a little breather. Like, hey, it's hot, I'm tired. Yeah. Let's recharge for these last two laps. It's got to be gnarly at this stage of the moto for these riders. 17 minutes in. Um, I hear this all the time. You know, like a Supercross main event will be 17 minutes. And fans will be like, oh, 17 minutes. That's not like a 30-minute moto. They probably don't even get tired. Dude. Go on a treadmill and run as fast as you can. You'll be <laughs> exhausted and out of breath in one minute. 17 yeah. minutes of sprinting in any sport. 17 minutes can be a long time. They're not jogging when they're on a supercross track. Yeah, we're not on just a Sunday cruise, just power walking and everything. So it's tough yeah. and it's challenging. So these guys are getting to experience something like that right now. And that's the letter Lynn holds. Oh, boy. They haven't trapped Justin Cooper. He's got to figure it out. By the way, rest of your top 10. Sixth is Zane Merritt. Addison Emery is seventh, Brock Gordley eighth, Lane Shaw is ninth, and Rocky Cagno rounds out the top ten. Want to uh, mention our win a 450 giveaway, and this is a really cool opportunity for you to win any 450 motocross bike you want. We've gotten every single manufacturer on board because this is a uh, charity raffle for the Asterisk Mobile Medic Unit, which is at all the professional Monster Energy Supercross and Lucas Oil Pro Motocross events. That's a very expensive rig to keep on the road and a, a great staff uh, as well. So to help defray some of those costs, each one of the manufacturers, they put a 450 up for grabs. So if you win the raffle, you pick which one you want and we'll get it to you. Very simple. All you have to do is go to winaf450.com. Winaf450.com. Easy to remember, hard to forget. Winno450.com and purchase as many raffle tickets as you want. And we'll stop the countdown at August 21st. And that's uh, the day before the final national of the year. So buy as many raffle tickets as you want. 100% of the pro proceeds go to the Asterisk Mobile Medic Unit at uh, the Supercross and Motocross Pro Races. And then on August 22nd, the day of the last national, the Ironman race in Indiana, you will can win draw a the winner. You can win a 450. That's it, yeah, you can win a 450, exactly. Uh, you do not need to be present to claim the prize. We'll contact you shortly after your announcement, and then you get to choose which brand you want. We had a Honda, a Husqvarna, a Kawasaki, KTM, Suzuki, or a Yamaha. You will win one of those 450s. Get your tickets now at winna450.com. <clears throat> and the question comes up, will they let you win a 350 in the Winna 450 sweepstakes? My guess would be yes. I don't want to put Husqvarna or KTM on the spot. Maybe we can get a second drawing next year. Okay. Yeah, but Justin Cooper right now is just cruising around on his race tech last lap, and he knows he has this in his bag, and I'm pretty sure he's gone three for three. So he's winning just like someone could win a 450. He's winning on a 450. You can win a 450, and he has won a moto. That's college moto number two matching his performance for moto number one where he took the victory. So he is indeed holding the pair of pocket aces.